going on guys? Sam Adams here and we just finished up watching EA play live over on Mixer.com slash Samuel Adams for E3 2018 coverage and it was a pretty beefy show. We had to talk about Madden, we had to talk about Anthem, we had to talk about Battlefield 5, a ton of stuff that rolled down the pipe and it is worth talking about. So we're going to be hitting the highlights, buckle in, it's going to be a bumpy ride. First off, we had the reveal of Battlefield 5 multiplayer, which looks very, very solid. Beautiful maps, beautiful effects, of course, Frostbite is a beautiful engine overall, so I'm excited to see more more about this game as time goes on but overwhelmingly it just got me excited for what was to come and I am definitely pumped up for Battlefield 5 whenever it hits in October I will say that there are more gameplay videos out there online that have been released because there was an embargo before the release of this official multiplayer trailer so I would recommend going out Jack Frags has a fantastic video up that shows off some of the gameplay and it certainly is worth checking out another thing that is worth mentioning about Battlefield 5 there has been the confirmation of a battle royale mode to go head-to-head -head against Call of Duty's Blackout and of course games like Fortnite and PUBG. I think what we are going to be seeing is the transition from Fortnite and PUBG to a Call of Duty versus a Battlefield scenario. It is time for the big boys to come to play. Then we saw the reveal of Origin Access Premiere, which is essentially a beefier version of Origin Access that gives you early access to the biggest titles that are coming out before they're actually released. You can play games like Battlefield 5, Madden, FIFA, and Anthem early. Those are the ones that have been confirmed, but I am sure that more will roll out down the line. However, what is the price of this? It's going to be $14.99 a month or $100 bucks a year, which could be a bit steep for some people, but then again, you have to remember that if you were to buy Anthem, Madden, FIFA, and Battlefield 5 all on the day of release, it would be a bit more than that considerably. So it's worth considering if you are a big fan of Electronic Arts titles on your PC via Origin. Then we had Sea of Solitude, which is essentially about a lonely boat ride, it seems, but it looks to be pretty good. It's a very emotionally driven story. It was developed with the idea of feeling uh, emotionally angry on the inside and that affecting who you are on the outside. Uh, pretty interesting story there, but the looks of the game kind of are similar to something like Overwatch or The Witness, if you're familiar with those games. Uh, it has a very artistic kind of style. I would definitely check out some gameplay and see if it is something that you might be interested in but it is coming to us from an indie studio so we have never really heard of these people too much before so hopefully this will give that studio the chance to prove itself and I am sure that they are going to do very very well because Electronic Arts does not take too many risks I mean a way out was a risk but it was a guaranteed confirmation that it would do well whenever you put that insane guy up on the stage so we'll see if we have the same kind of magic happen with this next game then we had NBA Live 19 which pretty much brings more of what you would expect from NBA Live of course you you have that kind of street feel that is changing up the way people view the game as compared to 2k19 which i think is a good move overall we of course have mad 19 which is making its return and debut on the pc after not being available for over 10 years it has not been on the pc for 10 years and then you have fifa 19 which has a couple of more licenses some world cup stuff for fifa 18 has been revealed if you are a big fan of sports games i apologize my content coverage is not nearly as in-depth as it is for things like battlefield 5 and anthem it just is that way you can find out more uh, of course, at Electronic Arts official website, more is going to be revealed during E3. But of course, we have these three games coming out. But the most significant thing there is that we actually have a Madden game coming out on the PC. Kind of weird. There was also some discussion about Battlefront 2, specifically more content that is going to be coming down the pipe for that. They are adding the Clone Wars, which is very interesting. You have, of course, a whole bunch of new content coming out, new heroes such as Count Dooku, uh, you have General Grievous, Obi-Wan, Anakin. There's a ton of new content coming out for Battlefront 2, and they also address the fact that they had completely and totally Ooh, man, it was bad when that game launched, but they have said they're going to work to fix it, to bring more content into the game and to bring players back. It looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. There is a lot of content to be had in Battlefront 2, and the good thing about it is, is that it will be on sale over the course of the next few months because they are trying so desperately to get anybody to come back to that game. I don't really want to, but the amount of content coming back to it part of me kind of wants to. There was also a brief interview between Andrea Renee and the guy from Respawn, Vince Zampelli, you may have heard of him, talking about their Star Wars project that has been in the books for a long time, and he did confirm that the game would supposedly be coming out in the holiday season of 2019. I'll believe it when I see it, but we are going to be seeing more of that sometime next year. However, we did get an official title, which is actually Jedi Fallen Order, and it takes place between movies three and four during the dark times, which is essentially when Jedi were being hunted. Interesting setting, interesting game, excited to hear more about it, but I am tempering my expectations. However, 
I'm pretty excited. We also had the reveal and the debut of a game by the name of Unravel 2. It is the successor to Unravel, and it looks to be a pretty worthy successor at that. If you have a friend, it is a cooperative game, so you can jump in and solve puzzles in this kind of little cute yarn-filled world. It's pretty neat. If you're a fan of Little Big Planet, you're probably going to be a big fan of this. And of course, it is kind of one of those indie smaller titles, one that I think EA did very well with to begin with. So if you want to check it out, it is out right now. There was also this mobile game that had this big tournament thing that no one wants to talk about. However, there was a ton of Anthem talk, and that was what the main ending of the show did consist of. Of course, for those that don't know what Anthem is, it's pretty much the next big Bioware game, and it's really Bioware's last ditch effort to make a good impression on the public. And so far, it looks fantastic. There was a giant panel where people discussed what was going on within the game, and it seemed like it is going to be something that the Destiny community and the looter shooter guys are definitely going to be getting in on. Uh, of course, there was a multiplayer debut. There was the discussion of what would be in the game. Tons of content coming out, and there's going to be much, much more coverage on this game over the course of the next few months. But the big question is, when is it actually coming out? And we have had a confirmation that it will be coming out on February the 22nd, 2019. Strangely enough, right around Days Gone. Will that impact Days Gone sales? Kind of let, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think that the two populations that are playing the games might be differentiating enough that they can both survive. However, there is no doubt that more people are definitely going to be more interested in Anthem just because it is EA, it is Bioware, and it looks good. So that wraps up my breakdown of EA Play 2018. So those are the highlights of EA Play 2018. I probably missed a couple of things here and there, but those are the big beefy moments that you need to take into account. What do you think about the show? Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out any of these trailers in full, I have them linked down in the description box if you did want to give those a look. But of course, I will be continuing my E3 coverage throughout the rest of the weekend and next week. Cannot wait to dive into more games, more breakdowns, more conferences with you guys over on Mixer.com slash Samuel Adams when they do go live if you want wanted to check that out. But as for right now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I will talk to you soon. Peace.